Let's begin with a prayer. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful for our blessings, uh, life, the way that you sustain us, but we're especially thankful for you sending your son for each one of us. There's nothing that we can do to try to match that, but we ask you to help us as we live our lives that we might look toward that example. We might try to be more like you every day. Continue to be with us as we interact with each other every day. Give us opportunities. Help us to see those opportunities to influence more people for you. Be with us as we continue to try to live for you. Help us as a nation as we begin to look toward electing leadership. Be with us as we look at the principles and the guidelines Help us to realize that uh, those people that we help elect, put in office, will lead our country. But it realize, Lord, that we will lead our, our families, uh, our friends, those that around us, and help us to con continue to be like you, to be Christ-like in everything that we do. Help us as we continue to look forward to being able to help others to be generous with everything that you have provided for us our our money our time our love our interest uh, that we might look toward those that we can help continue to be with us as we serve give us opportunities to serve be with those that are leading this congregation in the decisions that they make and the directions that they look toward strengthening the congregation in service to you. Help us as we continue throughout this worship service this morning. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Monrovia. Thank you for coming to be with us here this morning. Uh, we're going to begin with a reading from Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let's stand together and sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. Our who art in heaven, the rocks cry out your name. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of 
of your name on earth as it is in heaven. God, give us new every morning. Mercy is daily bread. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us with your hand. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Father, we pray. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. For the kingdom is yours and the power is yours and the glory forever. Amen. For the kingdom is yours and the power is yours and the glory For the kingdom is yours, and the power is yours, and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, the kingdom is yours, and the power is yours, and the glory forever. Amen. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven lay your burden down every care you carry and come to the table of grace for there is mercy come just as you are we are all unworthy to enter the presence of god for he is holy. Lift up your heart, lift up your hands, fall on your knees and pray for the King of kings and the love he brings is here in this place. We raise our voices, raise our song, Offer him our praise for the King of kings and the joy he brings is here, he is here in this place. Lay your burden down, every care you carry, and come to the table of grace. For there is mercy, for there is mercy, come just as you are, we are all unworthy to enter the presence of God, for he is holy. is here in this place. We raise our voices, raise our song, offer him our praise for the King of kings and the joy he brings is here, he is here. Lift up your heart, lift up your hands, fall is here in this place. We raise our voices, raise our song, offer him our praise for the King of 
and the joy he brings is here, he is here in this place. Jesus, let us come to Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Uh, a few announcements for us this morning. Uh, still collecting vegetables this month, so bring those in. Help us keep our um, food pantry stocked up. Today, we've got a baby shower for uh, Sarah Max uh, back in the uh, the gathering room. Uh, I know that says next Sunday, but next Sunday is this Sunday. So uh, I hope you're not confused because I'm not. Um, so it's, it's this Sunday. It's today uh, back in the gathering room. Uh, Hearts for Missions coming up um, next week. Uh, so we'll have uh, just a, a big overview of our missions effort, so please be there for that. Uh, be ready to, uh, to pledge and support our, our mission effort for this coming up year. Uh, Valentine's dinner also coming up soon. Uh, Terra Nova's sign-up sheet is out back on the desk. Please start signing up. Um, and so that will be, wow, that is like in a week almost. So uh, please, if you haven't signed up, do that soon. And uh, for our youth, um, you see we've got February 7th here at Bowling. For first and sixth grade, there's been a little bit of a change of plans. Um, we decided to shift our care groups for February instead of the fourth Sunday. Uh, our small groups, we're going to do that on the first Sundays because a lot of people uh, were asking about, you know, Super Bowl and, and things like that. So a lot of people want to meet with their, their small group for the Super Bowl and gather that. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to move our bowling for our first through sixth grade to the 28th, which will be the fourth Sunday of, of this month. So, um, so please note there will be no uh, services at the building um, uh, next Sunday night, um, the uh, the youth will still will still have our party upstairs. Okay, so um, NYG will be up there watching the Super Bowl. We have a lot of food, uh, things like that. And then um, let's see. Also tonight, um, keeping with things going on, we're going to be meeting in here for the fifth Sunday. We're just going to have a church wide game night. So go in your closets, wherever you may be, have all your board games, bring them with you, just scoop up every one you got, just bring it with you. Uh, we're going to have pizza, but that is for the kids only. I wanted to clarify that. Okay, adults, you need to bring something for you to eat, all right? The, the pizza is for the kids, okay? Not for you, so stop. Just bring you something. But um, so, uh, but, but do that. We're going to bring, uh, actually, it's going to be appetizers, uh, things like that. So like Christy, uh, she's bringing, what do you bring? Meatballs, right? So something along that line. So bring an appetizer to share. Uh, we'll have everything set back up back there for the adults. Again, pizza for the kids tonight. Uh, hold on just one second. Okay, Winterfest for Winterfest. Uh, you see February the 19th uh, right there. Uh, we need everybody that's coming to Winterfest to be at the building by 1130 a.m., okay? Uh, we've got to, uh, to get on the road pretty quick. So if you're not here when we're leaving, uh, I'm going to leave you, okay? So, uh, so get here on time and also make sure you've got plenty of money. We'll, and we'll have a, a, just a quick meeting um, uh, coming up and we'll talk about that. But you, know, you need to have money for food, all that good stuff. Uh, but please, please be here on the 19th at 1130. And we're going to try to roll out of here by 12 o'clock, okay, uh, and get on the way to Gatlinburg. And that is all of our youth announcements for right now. All right, just a couple of other uh, announcements, and then we'll talk a little bit about the mission day. It seems like uh, a lot of times when we have uh, a good announcement, there's equally a sad announcement with it. And 
Uh, this past week, Dan, uh, Dan and Julian, but Dan's father passed away, and uh, it's just been a tough week for their family, certainly, and I just ask you to remember Dan and Julian in, in your prayers, especially Dan and his family. We, uh, we understand the loss, and we really feel for you there. Uh, and then on the opposite side of that, which is always difficult, is my, our, uh, uh, Zach and Megan had a kid, and they named him Kid. Isn't that appropriate? So, you know, as he goes through life and somebody says, well, who's that kid? They'll say, kid, right? I thought that was funny. Michael Kid. I don't think they're going to call him Kid, though, right? Michael, probably. Uh, but Zach and Megan wanted us to uh, read this little note to you. It says, dear Monrovia family, thank you for all your support, prayers, and generosity during the pregnancy birth of Michael Kid Riggins. Over the past few days, Megan and I have witnessed modern-day miracles that have been absolutely humbling. Everything... Uh, or everyone that has prayed over the birth of our son, I assure you, uh, has been answered, and we cannot be more thankful. The Monrovia Church of Christ family is dear to our hearts, and we cannot thank you all enough for everything you have done. Love, Zach, Megan, mm -hmm. and Michael. Uh, Greg and Catherine, uh, proud grandparents, and Greg's uh, over in Japan. He's supposed to be back Friday to uh, meet his new grandson, and we're excited for their family. Let me get the kids come on down front. While they're on the way down... Let me mention, uh, <clears throat> next Sunday is our contribution for missions. Now, we will not, we'll, we'll have normal uh, activity and preaching next Sunday. This is why we've taken each week and just highlighted a particular mission that we're involved in. And this week, just want to mention a little bit about World Bible School that we started here just a few years ago, approximately 20 uh, teachers, uh, you know, people here in the church are involved in uh, helping support that. There's four missionaries in two countries, Tanzania and Malawi, and $20,000 of what we uh, contribute goes toward uh, the World Bible School mission effort. You can, this is Africa, for so, those of you that don't know anything about geography. It's uh, east of the United States, all right? It's across the big pond. And this is the eastern, southeastern side, I guess. There's Tanzania and there's Malawi. Malawi, and that's where uh, our folks work. Any of y'all ever been to Africa? Uh, no, no. You know what they have in Africa? Do what? You want to go to Africa? Y'all don't know how, what they have in Africa that we don't have here? A lot of animals. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, Africa, we usually think of safaris and lots of animals. All right. Here's Tanzania. This is where a few of our guys, whoops, I'm sorry, where a few of our guys are working. Daniel's up here, Michael over here. Now, they travel around a lot, and then Willie down in this area, and then Templex is down in Malawi, uh, down in the southern part. Again, they travel quite a bit. They're just not in one local community like we typically think of folks being. Just a few slides and pictures. This is Michael, Judith, and it's pretty neat. We provided this uh, contraption, I guess we would call it, whatever you, you want to uh, refer to that as, a baptistry, but we provided that for them. That's what they use, and uh, they have been seeing uh, a lot of results of their teaching, uh, numerous baptisms, and this is just a picture of those, and here's three of the young girls that Michael was able to convert, and uh, just a lot of success. Here's Daniel, and this is the church, the group of people that he works with, and this is just a smaller picture of some of those. Here's Willie. Uh, excuse me. His family. And then Templex. You know, Templex was the uh, fellow that we raised money for recently to purchase a motorcycle. Uh, this is him at a prison uh, actually baptizing somebody. And I asked Wendell if he knew what that was. That's obviously uh, some kind of block and brick with water in it, I don't know, and he didn't know exactly what it was for, but it's something they use uh, to baptize somebody. Here he is on his motorcycle, and uh, Wendell was telling me just a, a short time ago, he had tried to get his motorcycle registered, they called him, he had to make a long trip because they thought the registration serial number was uh, wrong, long story there, but it ended up there was just some transposed numbers, he got it all worked out, but on his way back home, he was able to stop, I think he said, three prisons that he hadn't been able to go to in a long time, and during that process, was able to baptize, what was the number? 41. 41 people. Can you imagine? Isn't that great? All that is really because of their great work and effort and then the money that we contribute uh, that you're so much a part of uh, to help bring God's word into this part of the country. Here's the number of students. You can see the number of lessons. 
and the number of baptisms. Look at this. In 2015, 134. Praise God. Give him a hand. That's pretty neat, isn't it? Pretty neat. And this is how inexpensive it really is in that part of the world. You can see Willie and Michael, we give them $150 a month in support, $1,800 a year, and then they each have $50 a month as far as a Spence account, and you see they're wireless, and we you know, help train them. There's just some cost, but look, 4,300, 3,200. Now, Daniel, he's pretty impressive. Uh, he's working, and we're supporting him just at a level of $50 a month, but uh, obviously they can do more there, but these folks also live very minimal in their effort to serve God and to reach out to others, and we're so encouraged by that. You can see all these numbers, and we'll put this uh, again on the website if you want to go look at these numbers a little closer. All of that is $20,000. How much are we trying to raise next week? 47000 That's right, 47000 That's either in what you give or what you pledge next week, right? We'll take everything given next week, and then you'll also have the opportunity to pledge and I'm going to give you a second pledge in the lesson today that we will make next week, or I'll encourage you to, but all that together uh, will be our missions for the year. So certainly be praying about that and uh, think about what it is you can contribute and give toward that. All right. Jason mentioned this. But I want to go back and make sure everybody understands. Tonight, what are we doing? Tonight is just, you know, whatever you... It, and there's no, he was asking, so are, like, are we going to play games? Everybody play games together? No, this, yeah, I say game night. You can just come and sit in the corner and just talk to somebody till 8 o'clock because it's over at 8, all right, and you go home then. 5.30 to 8. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm going home at 8. You can stay as long as you want to. <laughs> but it's just get together and fellowship, all right? Play games, whatever you want to do. Now for food, all right, kids are going to have what? Pizza. Pizza. If you want something different, tell your mom and dad to bring it, all right? But for us, it's not like you bring your food. We're just going to put whatever is brought back there on the table, all right? And so people can just graze like the cows do and uh, just graze for the whole time you're here and just eat. So, you know, appetizers, finger foods, whatever. Uh, just that, that's what kind of food we need you to bring. And you might bring, a, we encourage you to bring a drink because we're just going to put all of it back there and then whatever's brought, we'll share, okay? But there will be somebody checking at the door, and if you don't bring anything, you get a tag on you, and that means you don't get to eat anything, all right? You're just one of, you're, you're tagged as uh, no food available. I'm kidding. You can come and not bring anything. I'll just talk about you next week. <laughs> now, next Sunday, what are we going to do? I have normal service Sunday morning. Care group we usually have on fourth Sunday. We're going to have that on the first Sunday. So what are you going to do next first Sunday night? Whatever you choose to do, all right? There just won't be anything here, all right? But ideally, you'll get together with people in your small group or just make up a small group. Get together. Do you have to watch Super Bowl? No, you don't have to. You can sit around and uh, fellowship. You can, you know, whatever you want to do. But we're just going to take that Sunday night. Certainly, there's a lot of folks that do find interest and enjoy watching the Super Bowl. And so it's a great time to fellowship with people together as you do that. If that's not important to you, that's all right, too. All right, everybody got that? Y'all are bored to tears, right? Not as much as you're going to be with the video I'm going to show you today, all right? We got a video here that's going to support what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about generosity. It's sort of a carryover from the last few weeks. And this is Francis Chan. And I showed this video. I mean, it, it's, it's not very long, uh, but he says a lot of good things. But he makes a statement at the end that is really important, and that's what I want you to remember. If Christians gave just this one area, just financially, the way that Jesus would want us to, it would have such an amazing effect on the whole world. And I'm not just talking about all the people we could help, you know, and feed and get them the water and everything else. I'm talking about the cynicism that we see towards the church in the United States. Flying out here, person next to me, just why does he reject God? I've seen it all. My buddy that came with me sat with another guy. Why doesn't that guy believe in God? <laughs> Same type of thing. Everyone's pointing to these believers who, yeah, he calls himself Christian, but I don't see anything 
They don't see a compassion. They don't see a love. They see us say that we hold to certain beliefs and a certain theology, but they don't see us really loving people to the point where we give to them sacrificially. And I think just that one thing, because the world loves their money so much, that it really is shocking to them and a light to them when they go, you really don't care. You just gave that away joyfully. You really believe you're going to be rewarded in the next life. Like, you know, whether they believe it or not, at least now they're rejecting a, a true example. Um, right now there's just, the, the people laugh at what we call church, what we call Christianity. And so if we could get churches to really seek to live out this kind of loving, generous giving, uh, I think it's going to have a huge impact on the world. Jesus talked about money so much, so it doesn't make any sense to say, let's talk about spiritual things, not money. That's like, okay, so then Jesus wasn't real spiritual, <laughs> you know? And no, he talked about it all the time. It's, Jesus was, when you, when you look at the things that he would say to people, he was very concrete. See, we like, in, in America, we like to make spirituality almost um, something you can't measure. We, we make it very abstract. Like, oh, I feel this, God, he's just in me, I just know it. You, you know, and, and well, but where's the fruit? You know, where's the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness? You know, the, the words that Jesus uses, the words that John uses, the words that James uses, is this like, well, you say this, you say this kind of ethereal, abstract, oh, I love people, but scripture would say, but if you love them, you wouldn't just say, oh, I love you, go warm and be fed. You would actually give them some food and put some clothes on their back. It, you would do something practical, something we could see. And, and you know, you, and, and at the same time, he says, you're not going to be like the Pharisees who do things just to be seen. And so we're not talking about that. But true, true spirituality is going to lead to some sort of action. Like, I, I'm trying to think, it, it may have been Amy Carmichael who said, you can, you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. I thought, ooh, that's good. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what it comes down to. We can say, oh, I'm so loving this, that. Well, if you were, you would give. It's time now for our change for Jesus, so... Uh, if you've got some loose change you'd like to give this morning, we will do some good works for children with that. And our children are going to come around with cups and collect it. Ray, what time are we starting tonight? Is it 5? Okay. I think you said 5.30. Uh, so just want to be sure. So uh, game night tonight starts at 5 o'clock. So everybody bring your food and come and bring your games and enjoy that with us together. After we finish Change for Jesus... Our children up through kindergarten are going to be dismissed for Children's Church. And while I'm at it, Frank, are you going to do? Yes. You are doing the, next week. Okay, so there will not be uh, classes for one through three uh, later on. All right, so, but our children up through kindergarten will be dismissed for Children's Church. So let's all uh, not stand, but just sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me when I'm good, when I do the things I should. Jesus loves me when I'm bad, but it makes him very sad. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. I love Jesus, does he know? 
do I often tell him so? Jesus loves to hear me say that I love him every day. Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. I often tell him so. Merciful God and Father, loving us like a hear our prayer, the cry of our hearts as we come to you. We acknowledge our transgressions. We confess to you our sins. Show us mercy and compassion. Touch our lives with your healing grace again. Release us from the past. As we seek your face, wash us free at last. We receive your love. We receive your healing grace. We Show us mercy and compassion. Touch our lives with your healing grace again. Release us from the past as we see. I have been very interested in, for the past two or three years, in the study of the nature of God and of his son, Jesus Christ. It seems that every time I start that study, I go back to a verse that we all learned as children, but I'll repeat it today. John 3.16, you all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I want to emphasize some thoughts which indicate that this is not a superficial love. Instead, it is one which should set the tone for everything we do in our daily lives. Communion or the Lord's Supper is not a step we take to become a Christian. 
It is not a step we take to begin a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The Lord's Supper presumes a vibrant relationship with Christ. If you look up the meaning of the word communion, some interesting words appear. Empathy, close association, union, and relationship are all used to symbolize communion. The Lord's Supper or communion is synonymous with relationship. It is all about having empathy with our Lord and Savior, understanding his passionate love for us, understanding his sacrifice, his forgiveness, his life, and his death. It is about our close relationship with Jesus Christ. We are God's children. Jesus is our life, our identity, our hope, our future, our destiny, and our purpose. Communion is being proud of the name we wear. In baptism, we are clothed with Christ. We become united with him in death, in his death, burial, and resurrection. Communion reminds us that we have been united with someone eternal who transcends this life, who has conquered death, and who promises us an eternal hope. In communion, it is not necessary for the Lord to be bodily present among us. That doesn't take away or diminish the significance of communion. Instead, the physical elements, the broken bread and the fruit of the vine, remind us of a relationship that goes beyond time, space, and death. It must be emphasized that his physical presence is, his physical presence is irrelevant because Jesus is spiritually with us as we partake of the broken bread and the fruit of the vine that symbolize his broken body. Would you pray with me, please? Our Father who art in heaven, we're so thankful for everything you've done for us. And we're thankful that we're, that we're so blessed because you gave your son, Jesus Christ, upon the cross to die for us. And because of that, Father, we can enjoy so many spiritual blessings and so many other things in this life that, that we otherwise would not have. Be with us today, Father, as we partake of this bread and help us to all look back and remember and try to empathize with Jesus Christ as he hung upon that cross. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Would you pray with me, please? Our Father who art in heaven, we're again so thankful for the Lord's Supper and for these elements that mean so much to each one of us. And we're thankful now for this fruit of the vine, which re represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior and your Son. We're thankful, Father, that because of this shed blood, we have our sins washed away. And because of your death, his death upon the cross, cross, we have salvation. Only if we would believe and accept him as our Savior. Be with us today, Father, as we pray. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We should all be happy that we are members of a group of believers that serve people in so many ways and give to mission efforts and uh, closet ministry, pantry, to our educational programs. There's so many things that uh, we have to be thankful for. And Father, we pray your blessings upon us now as we give. Uh, back to you, a portion of that which we have received in Christ's name. We pray, Amen. Let's all stand together and sing. I am weak, but you are strong. 
Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, O oh Lord, close to you. Through this world of toils and snares, if I fall, Jesus, I am ready 
to surrender every care. Take my hand now, lead me closer. Lord, I need to meet you there. Take my hand now, lead Lord, I need to meet you there. Please stand please. Good morning. All right. Christy said I said 5.30 next week till whatever. Uh, <clears throat> I've had a cold for a, just most of this week. And I know I, it was funny. Christy looked over. I was trying to wipe my nose and stuff. She said, listen, how many people are coughing? I can hear it right now. It's just, I know it, I'm not the only one. A lot of people have it. But if you have had that or in the middle of it, you sort of know how it does. It just sort of messes you up everywhere. So I'm going to really focus to try to say what I intended to say when I got here today. But if I say something just really wacky off the wall, I've tried to uh, get your forgiveness before I start. But 5 o'clock tonight, okay? 5 o'clock. I think I had said 5 to 7.30, and then I said 5.30 to 8. So 5 o'clock to whenever you want to go home, all right? <clears throat> Everybody got that? Come tonight. Now, next week, uh, you know, we're, we're in the middle of this belief, but I want to take just a minute and punch next week. Uh, we'll get back to some small group discussion and believe in where we're going to go with that whole topic the week after. But next week. I encourage you, if, if you got somebody uh, you can bring with you, uh, we're going to talk about politics next week, all right? We're going to take one week, and we're going to talk about politics, because we are headed for, I really believe, a fairly ugly political season. And here's what we're going to really focus on next week. You are not a Democrat, and you are not a Republican. You are a Christian. And we need to do our best to walk through. We, we, we talked about this a year or two ago. We're going to go back and we'll review a little bit of that. You, I'm going to, what I'm going to encourage you to do is walk through your political process, not viewing everything around you through the lens of your politics, but through the lens of your faith. Remember, we talked about that a little bit. And we need to be able to see that. And what I see so much of, and what's real discouraging and it's like social media. A lot of social media can be very good. You know that. There's a lot of benefit from it. But I see a lot of people voicing very, very ugly comments about differing views and promoting what their particular one is to the place and to the point you can offend folks to the point you cannot talk to them about Jesus because you have so frustrated them about your particular political view. Anyway, we're going to spend some time talking about that next week in a very blunt way, and I think it's very healthy, and I encourage you to be here uh, if you're interested in that discussion. Hey, let me tell you, and one thing I'm going to tell you, have you noticed, I, I saw a poll this morning, or not a poll, but I saw something that I thought was very interesting. It was talking about the Democratic side, and you know, the caucuses start tomorrow. It was talking about Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, and I can't remember the exact age cutoff, but like... 65, 70% of the, the people that had pledged that they're going to vote for Hillary were somewhere around 35, 40 years old and older. And like 75% or so of the people that had pledged support. Now, some of you are out there sitting and you're, some of you are right now, you're, who's, who's Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders? I never heard of them. But some of you know who I'm talking about, right? But a lot of the, it was, it, it was incredible. Like 70% of the people and the support for Bernie Sanders were people like 35 and under. There is a tremendous lesson for us to learn about ourselves, and I'm talking about us, from that, just that, that poll in itself. And so anyway, we're going to talk about those things next week. Today, we're going to keep on through our talking about how to be fulfilled right? How to be happy. And that this is, you know, has so much about what you believe. And we went through uh, several things. I want to get, quickly get into it. You know, last week we really talked about, it's not about you. The lessons are out there on the website if you want to go listen to some of how we got to where we are. But last week, you remember we talked about this, it needs to be about other people. Today, this is a very, very practical lesson. And I'm going to give you a couple of things to think about 
And I'm going to give you a challenge at the end to see, uh, I, mean, I won't see if you do it, but I'm going to encourage you to do it, okay? There's not, no, no accountability or follow-up. Nobody's going to verify if you've done this or not. But it's going to be an opportunity for you to participate in this. Again, this is extremely practical, but we need to understand the difference in what we're talking about. In fact, this morning, I've heard a lot about giving, and, you know, we had a little clip about generosity, and it's funny, if you ask somebody, what is, the, what is generosity, you know what they'll say, they'll say, what well, means to be generous? I always hate it when somebody gives you a definition for a word, and they use the word in what they gave back to you. That doesn't help me at all. If I didn't know what generosity is, I probably don't know what generous is. So, we're going to try to learn a little bit about what it means to be a generous person, all right? And to be a generous person is different. It's really different than being a giving person. We are, and I'll find this to be true with a lot of groups of people, but as at Monrovia, we are a very giving group of people. You can come up and present almost any need you wanted to. Uh, and, and we do that quite often, just like recently with Templex, and we showed the motorcycle. But you can come up and present a need of almost any type, and very quickly, you will have money put together to satisfy that particular need, all right? People are giving, and a lot of people are giving in life, but just because you're giving in life does not mean you're a generous person, because people can persuade you. That's what people like you know, that are talkers or, or, you know, they get up with some particular emotional story uh, or like a template and, uh, you know, nothing bad there, but, you know, a, a real need, they can come and present that to you and then you will give something based on that particular need being put in front of you that you had never intended to give that money before you heard that need and then in that moment you were persuaded or motivated or whatever caused you to pull out your checkbook or pull out some cash and to put some money in. So you give, right? Understand what I'm saying? It's important to get. You can be a giving person and not be a generous person and you'll find most often that many of the people that are giving people are not really generous people. They give, and they'll give a sporadic amount at sparing times, but it's not really just a part of their everyday life and everyday mentality. Generous people live generosity in their lives, and we're going to talk about what it really means to be generous in a few minutes, all right? Now, sort of the motivation. If I were to ask most of you to raise your hand on these few questions, I think most of you would go along with me and say, yeah, I'd like to do that. How many of you would like to give more? And I want to understand what I'm talking about giving. This lesson is not to motivate you to put money in the collection plate. I'm talking about giving. And, you know, we talked about last week and week before, and that really is what brought us to this lesson. I have encouraged you, and I'm going to continue to encourage you to set money aside to be able to flow into other people's lives as the Spirit of God leads you to do that, right? That, that's a big part of this, is we need to, it's like Francis Chan said, we need people to see the generosity coming out of us. If we love, we will give. So, you know, it, it could result in you writing a check to whether it's Monrovia or whatever, uh, con you know, a charitable, country or charitable foundation that you like and support, whatever that is, you know, Harvest House or wherever it is you like to give money. But a whole lot of it is just setting money aside to be able to flow into other people's lives. How many of you would like to be able to give more? I'm not asking for a show of hands, but I think most of you, if you were to give an honest answer, you'd say, yeah, that would be neat. How many of you would like to save more money? I think most of you, if we went around the room, say, you know, I, yeah, I'm, it's good what I'm saving, but it would be nice if I saved a little more. And then how many of you would like to be content with your life and consume less? You know, now, and you sort of have to put those two together because if I just ask you how many of you would like to consume less, yeah, yeah but am I going to find contentment? So the key is, I would really like to be content. I would like to be satisfied. I would like to feel fulfilled without having to consume so much. We in America, I mean, we, we, we are just consumption 
you know, animals, really, when it comes to, and really, we, we are like an animal in that. We just, we just go take, 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 and just, you know, and, and our garbage. Have you ever thought about it? You know, I told you sometimes there's things that I lay awake and think about that you probably don't, don't, and it doesn't make me better than you. It's probably I'm just dumber than you. But, because I, I wonder, I lay awake sometimes, where do we put all the garbage? I mean, isn't it amazing how much garbage we create? But we're a consumption people. All right, so here's the deal. If you were to buy in to really being a generous person, you would give more, you would save more, and you would consume less. That'd be pretty neat, right? Yeah. All right. So when we get into generosity in a minute, we'll come back to these slides. Here's what generosity, here's what a generous mentality really is. It means I have predetermined, right? Think about it. Predetermined. That means I've already thought about it, right? <clears throat> Not only have I predetermined, I predetermined an amount. So there's a specific amount. I predetermined a specific amount that is going to be for a particular purpose that could be plural. It could be multiple purposes and probably will. If you're really a generous person, you do not predetermine an amount to all give to one thing. There's a variety of opportunities for you to flow money into. And here's the one that is really neat, and this has all been set aside. And we'll, we'll get to what those mean in a little more detail in just a moment. All right, this, this lesson today didn't have a whole lot of Scripture, but it's all biblically based, all right? Jesus said, and you know this, and everything I did, this, you know, they're talking, they, they go back to the statements of Jesus, and here's what Jesus himself said, look at the last thing, and you know this, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, I have, if you read that, and you just sort of take it the way it's said, I struggle with that a little bit. Do you? Because I don't know. I like getting. Do you? Let's be honest. Don't you like getting? I, I do. If you doubt me, just give me something. And I'll show you how much I like getting. But especially as we're getting, you try to teach this principle to kids. How many kids don't like to get more than they like to give? About it, Dave, I see your dad punching. You like to get more or give more? Get more, right? Yeah, yeah. The preacher says give more, so I'll say that, and daddy's watching me. But yeah, I mean, kids, they like to get, don't you? And as adults, we struggle with that too. The, the point, and we're not going to get deep into the Scripture, but it's not saying that when I get something, I don't, receive any kind of a benefit from it. I only receive a benefit when I give something. That's not what it's saying. It's saying the life of a giver is a life that is more blessed than the life of a receiver. Is it blessed because something's pouring into it that's blessing it? No, it's blessed because that life is living by the design of its creator. Remember what we talked about? You were designed to love and to be in relationship, and to be a giving person. And only when you're there are you going to feel that fulfillment we're talking about, right? If you're trying to feel that and to fill your life up with that by getting, by consuming, you'll never get there. Now, you'll have that momentary pleasure of something new. Isn't it wonderful? You know, the, the one that I've always enjoyed is getting in a new vehicle because of that smell. Isn't it wonderful, that new smell? But it's just momentary, and you know that, and then you need to go buy a new vehicle to get that again, right? And, you know, the, the deal with consuming is it just breeds more and more discontentment, and then I need to consume more to get that same feeling again. This is saying it's more blessed to give than to receive. You can get that benefit, and you can get it over and over and over. You can get that feeling. You can get in touch with that fulfillment in your life by giving, by giving, just being generous. All right, now I said this is very practical, and this is a, we're going to learn just a little bit here, all right? This is a money cycle. I just offer this to you free of charge because this is an incredible stupidity in America that we follow, and it doesn't make any sense, but we do it over and over and over, and most everybody in here is guilty of it. All right, 
The most common word that you'll hear associated with money is worry. All right? If you talk to people, you know, as they're going through life and they have any kind of money concerns, it's usually because they're worried. Worried about what? And y'all worry about money? What, what is it we worry about? <laughs> Not having enough. Yeah, most of us are worried about future consumption. Am I going to have enough money as I grow older to be able to consume what it is that I feel I'm going to need to consume at that point in my life for me to have contentment and security and safety and all that stuff, right? So we go through our lives and we're constantly worried about having enough money, all right? Would you all agree with that? Most of us do. You know, that, that, you know, maybe you've spiritually gotten to a place that's not a real concern of you, but most of us worry about our finances and money. We'll take on part-time jobs, or we'll look at other ways to increase our income because I feel like if I just had a little more coming in, then I would have more security. That's that worry thing. You know what's incredible, though, is what we in the United States do, <coughs> excuse me, when we're worried about money, you know what we do? We spend. That's right. Somebody, it, it's incredible. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. We're worried about future. So what do we do? We go spend. And you know what? You see this at the macro, at the, the level of our government and the federal government. You see it in state governments. You can see it in counties and municipalities. And then you see it down into homes. What we do is when we're worried, concerned about future money, then we feel like, okay, I need to spend money. Somehow that's going to help. Well, what it does it really helps alleviate a little bit of the worry for a short period of time because it introduces this little you know, input of uh, a high of some type so I can escape that worry, but I'm really not doing anything to make anything in the future better, but I am escaping it somewhat by just spinning, all right? You understand that? You're thinking, all right, I mean, that, that would be something childish. I would never do that. You do it. Most, most everybody does. Not only do they spend money, how do they spend it? They spend it by going in debt, right? Because they don't have the money, but they need. Now, and here's something that has incredibly happened in our society and culture over the past few years. I know this is getting into a little bit of political stuff, but since as a country we worry about the future, we're going to do what? We're going to spend, right? And how are we spending to make things okay in the future. We're not going in debt. We don't call it that. We're investing. We invest in our future. But we invest by borrowing, right? Isn't that right? That's sort of that's that sales pitch out there to you to make you believe this is good. We're going to invest in our future. We're going to build this up. And we're going to put money over here and put money on that. What we're really doing is we're just spending money we don't have, so we're just going in debt. And you know the incredible thing about debt? This is just a sidebar that you need to understand. When you go buy something, all right, let's say something is $100, and I go buy it, but I borrow the $100, okay? So today, I paid $100 for something that was worth $100, but tomorrow, what's happened? Tomorrow, the value of what I bought went down. Depending on what it is, how much did it go down, I don't know, but we're going to say it went down to $90, but now you owe interest. So now you owe $100.50 for something worth 90. Six months from now, it's worth 60, and now you owe 113, or you know what, you will have paid back. You understand what I'm saying? So when you go in debt, from the very moment you go in debt, every day after that, every day after that, whatever it is you bought becomes a worse deal. Do you know that? So he says, well, I'm investing. <laughs> I don't know, there's not much out there you need to borrow money for an investment, right? But this is a cycle. Okay, so what happens? Now, I was worried about money. I'm worried about my future. I'm worried if we're going to, have, we're going to be able to do all this stuff. So I spent some money, and so I borrowed some money. And now what, what's going on? Now I got more bills. Now I really don't have any more money. So where am I? See up there? Where am I? I'm broke. And you really are. <clears throat> and so what does that do? That's why this is a continual circle. What does that do? Just creates more worry. 
Well, what does more worry do? Nah, go spend more. You think, no, I'm worried. I, I'm broken. I'm worried. So I'm going to stop. No, you're like the addict. You can't stop. You're in this circle. You're in this cycle, and you don't know how to get out of it. I'm telling you, folks, this is where our country is. This is where our state governments are. This is where our municipalities are. This is where our school systems are. It's where our corporations are. It's where individually as families we are. Over and over and over, we're in this endless cycle, and from the outside, you can see how ludicrous it is, but from the inside, once you're in there, you just don't know how to get out. All right? Well, how do I get out? Here's the deal. We talked about this last week, and I had this slide up here. you got to quit being so greedy. All right? And what is greed? I defined it last week this way. Greed is a mindset. We need to think different. Greed is a mindset where I believe everything that I take in is for my personal consumption. That's greed. See, I don't care if you make $10,000 a year or $500,000 a year. If you believe it's all for you, you are a greedy person. Right? It hasn't got anything to do with how much money you got or how much money you make. It has to do with how much of what you take in you believe is yours to consume. If you believe it's all for you to consume, you have bought into this greed mentality, and that puts you in that cycle. That's what leads you into that cycle, and you just can't get out of it, all right? So that's sort of the introduction. Now we're going to do the lesson, and it'll be quick. But here's what I encourage you to do. I encourage you to think different. Again, giving is something you do. Generous is something you are. It is how I live. It is who I am. I am generous, all right? The steps to becoming a generous person are right here. We're going back to this. It is predetermined. That means I have a plan. So I'm saying I didn't come here on Sunday morning to get a lesson on budgets. Well, I'm not really getting into deep into budgets, but I am. You have, if you want to be generous, you have to plan to be generous, right? You can give sporadically, either out of an emotional low or a high, but the only way you're going to continually be flowing into other people's lives is you have to plan to do that. You have to plan to do that. Now, everything we have around us is set up to keep you from doing that. I mean, really, you just think about your paycheck. You remember what, what I say is greed. Greed is what? Greed is believing whatever I have is for me to spend, right? What you think, think quickly a minute. And this is not by accident. This is by design. You think of your paycheck. You get your taxes taken out. You get your Social Security taken out. You get your Medicaid taken out, whatever it is, those things taken out. Guess what else they'll let you take out of your check? You can take your 401K out. You can take a pre-tax money to set aside to help pay for medical bills. And you can even have money set aside into a savings account for you, right? You can do all that. It just all automatically come out of your check, right? Now, I'm saying that's... I'm not saying that's all bad, but guess what that feeds into? Because most of us don't look at, you know, my check was $1,138. What do we look into? $692.28. My money. Right? Because I've already designated that. That's mine. Am I right? So we don't have to plan. We let everybody else plan for us. Understand? The problem with that, I'm only saying, the problem with that then is whatever I take, it feeds into that. That is mine. That is mine. I'm telling you, if they give us the whole thing and you had to plan to pay all of those, it would help you to learn to plan to be generous also. All right? But the key with being generous is, and that's why all this other stuff is sort of bad, generosity should come where? It shouldn't come after your federal taxes and your state taxes and your 401k and whatever you're going to save for retirement and save to pay medical bills. If you're going to be generous, where should that come? 
That should be the first thing that comes out of your money. Isn't that right? It's what God encourages us to be giving, right? Right? Y'all don't like this at all, do you? <laughs> but it's the truth. And, and this verse, by the way, and y'all know it, because God said, he said, your heart's going to be where? Wherever your money is. So let me ask you this. I'm just, this is Because I know you, at this point in the lesson, you swore bored, wish I'd hurry up and shut up. But I'm telling you this, folks. Your heart cannot be with God if your money is not with God. If you think there's any way you can walk with God today and have your money somewhere else, you are wrong. Not because Ray Palmer said so, but because God himself said so. So, generous. I need to predetermine. I need to have a plan. All right? A plan of what? A plan of an amount. Right? What is an amount? It's how much. How much. How much of what I am responsible for. You know, it's all God's. We're heirs with God together. It's all his. But he has chosen to put me in a position to be responsible for this part. How much of that? How much of that would show the love and the generosity I want to feel in my heart? You know what I'm saying? It's not show to God. It's how, do I, how do you want to feel generous? How much of that then? And here's why I've got that percentage sign up there. I encourage you. I encourage you not to determine a how much by a number, but rather by a percentage. Why is that? Because a number can sound pretty impressive at one point, like $100 a week. I'm going to be generous with $100 a week. And then like 10 years later, you're up to $120 a week, but your salary has doubled. You see, what the, the generosity is going down and down and down. You need to, I would I say you need to, I would encourage you to determine a percentage of, and guess what that means? So it says percentage of what? Well, you've you got to figure out whatever, whatever it means. But a percentage of everything you get goes here. I mean, it goes into this ability to flow into other people's lives. You understand what I'm saying? You get a bonus check for $200, whatever that percentage is, that comes off the top of that, right? That's first. Because that's just who I am. I wouldn't know to be any other way. Think about that percentage. I'll get back to that in, in just a minute. And maybe, you, you know, do a biblical percentage like three. That's a, a percentage, right? Three percent. That's a number used quite often in the Bible. Or you might say, well, I'm just, I want to be the most generous. So like seven, that's a number used pretty often in the Bible, isn't it? So 7%. But, you know, my favorite number in the Bible is 40 because a lot of things happen over 40. So maybe you want to do 40%. Huh, what about it? Yeah. For a particular purpose. And what is that? Who? That's the fun thing. I mean, this really, this is a fun part of generosity, isn't it? I mean, if I have predetermined an amount, then in prayerful discussion with God, again, then in prompting by His Spirit, I get to, this is who. And you know what one of the greatest things about this is? If you are a generous person, it gives you the license to say no. A generous person does not feel an obligation to give to every need that's put in front of them. If you, and I'm telling this is one of the clear signs you're a giving person and not a generous person. If you are somebody that every time somebody gets up and they present a need, you feel, oh, yeah, I need to do that. You're a giving person. And that's, that's good, but you're not a generous person. If you are a generous person, guilt does not enter your mind when people are talking about needs because you have already predetermined between you and God the generosity that is in your life and you know you're living your life in that manner. Now, you may be encouraged to give something at that moment to something. You may not, but does that make sense? I mean, it's really neat when you live that way to where people can't guilt you into writing a check because you've already predetermined. You've already made up your mind the amount that you're going to flow into other people's lives because you know that's an obligation and an opportunity you have given to you by God himself. Now, here's the deal. This is set aside. And I mentioned this last week uh, quickly. 
set aside. The value to this is you get to live on the rest, right? You see, Alan Miller may want to go buy a new car. Guess what? If Alan Miller is generous in his life, he should go buy that new car and just enjoy every minute of it. And I didn't say go borrow money to do it, but he should go pay cash and buy that car and just enjoy it. That's fine. Isn't it neat to be able to do things in life and to not feel any guilt by it? Go buy a new pair of boots, Christy, or go buy a new dress, whatever it is. Go, go spend that money and enjoy it if you have done this other first. But if you hadn't done this other first, you'll get a momentary pleasure out of that new stuff, but then there'll be a tinge of guilt because maybe I should have done this. Maybe I should have taken it and done that, right? Does that make sense? All right, here's the deal. Everybody understood every word I said. Most of you, though, are just glad it's over because you don't really want to think about it that much. This is an opportunity. Most of you, though, and I'm not, this isn't to, to try to be bad to you, but most of you will sit here and think, yeah, that's some pretty good stuff. But by about 2 o'clock today, you will have already moved on. Because you would like to be generous, but you're scared. I mean, you're scared to really go sit down and look at it because you don't know how it would impact your life. I understand that. Be scared, though, of as you walk through life, how much it's going to impact that you never did it. That's what you really, really should be scared of. So next week, is Mission Sunday, and you're going to have opportunity to give, and you're going to have opportunity to pledge what you will put into missions this one year. I'm going to ask you to do this, though. And next Sunday, we're going to, when we take up the money, we're going to bring those plates up here, and we're going to have a prayer. Uh, and this, this is not about the mission. The, you know, Support the mission work. We've tried to build that up, and I hope you'll do that. But we're not going to take anything out of it and look at it. But I ask you, as individuals and as families, to do this. To go home this week, talk together, pray together. And next week, you don't have to put a name on or anything, but just bring a little piece of paper. And either put an amount of money or what I'd encourage you to do is a percentage of your income. that is going to go to generosity in your life. Make sense? I encourage you. You may already be doing it. You may already be at a place you feel like, you know, we're, we are generous with an amount that I think is good. Well, make it a commitment. You know, make it a pledge that this is where I'm going to be. This is where I want to live. Does that make sense to you? It's just an opportunity for you to do it. Again, nobody's going to look at it. Don't even sign it when you bring it in. Then we're just going to pray that God will bless our efforts to live generous lives. I think that's important. I think it's really important when you try to commit to something that you put it down somewhere and you personally know you have pledged to do that. It will, it will, it will change your life. And guess what? It'll change how people around you see you. Because the statement from Francis Chan is so true. You can give and not love, but you cannot love and not give. Thank you. Let's stand. You are love, you are life, you are Lord over everything. Alpha, Omega, Jehovah, the King of kings, a wonderful way, maker worthy of my offering. Hallowed be thy name. You are love, you are life, you are Lord over everything. Alpha, Omega, Jehovah, the King of kings, a wonderful way, maker worthy of my offering. Hallowed be thy name. You're the answer to all of my problems and you solve them. Hallowed be thy name. You supply all my needs and I call you Abba Father. Hallowed be thy name. You're my almighty fortress in a time of tribulation. Hallowed be thy name. And I'm more than a conqueror in every situation. Hallowed be thy name. Well, well, you, you are love, you are life, you are Lord over everything. Alpha, Omega, Jehovah, the King of kings, a wonderful
wonderful way, maker worthy of my offering, hallowed be thy name. You're the only God and there will never be another, hallowed be thy name. And 10,000 angels could tell how much I love you, hallowed be thy name. Well, I'm gonna lift you up higher and higher, hallowed be thy name. And everybody will see that you set my soul on fire. Hallowed be thy name. Well, well, you, you are love, you are life, you are Lord over everything. Alpha, Omega, Jehovah, the King of Kings, a wonderful way, maker worthy of my offering. Hallowed be thy name. Well, well, you, you are love, you are life, you are Lord over everything. Omega. Alpha, Omega. Jehovah, the King of Kings, a wonderful way, make a worthy of my offering, hallowed be thy name. Oh, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we praise you, hallowed be thy name. Hallelujah, hallowed be thy name. We hope you'll stay and eat lunch with us. Greg's going to lead us in prayer and we'll be dismissed. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this morning that we were able to come here this morning to worship you, to sing songs, to get a lesson from your word, to fellowship together. We thank you for all the all the blessings and all the gifts that you give to us. We ask you to help us this week as we go out to be more generous, to uh, be an example of, of Jesus to others out in the world. We ask that you would uh, watch over us and care for us and keep us all safe. We thank you for the food that's been prepared for us, we ask that you bless it to nourish our bodies. We thank you for the people that prepared it. We also thank you most of all for Jesus, and it's his name we pray. Amen.